We will start with the most confusing one at the beginning, which is the flex basis. Now I'm having my one red element here and I set the flex basis to auto and the first thing that happens is you cannot really almost see anything except a small little thing that might come from um, some tiny margin from, from the text element uh, inside here. But basically the element shrinks to nothing. Although my basis is set to auto. Now, um, before I, when I set this up, I actually wanted to set this to 200 pixels. And now you can see that our element grows to 200 pixels. Now, there are two kind of good ways to describe flex bases that I um, that I heard over over the years um, in some in some lessons and tutorials and courses um, but they they are both kind of not they are not the one thing that is explaining you how basis works and that's a little bit um, the, the the tricky thing now one thing that people often say is you should think about basis as basically the width of your element and that works fine in that first example when you when you look at it because we set our basis to 200 pixels and it kind of grow it grew to those 200 pixels when we set it to 300 pixels it's changing to 300 pixels now so it is kind of the width except it isn't now let's see what happens when we go to the parent element and we change our flex direction and now we can see it's not the width anymore. Actually, now our 300 pixels are um, along the vertical axis. And the other thing is just the stretch on the, um, on the horizontal axis. So now it's not the width at all anymore. So um, let's just go to the parent element, change this back again. And now we have those 300 pixels. Now for a starter, it still makes sense to think about um, the flex basis as a width, just as a width along your main axis. So when you change your main axis to, um, to column, then you can, it's actually your height, but you can think about in a very crazy term, you can think about it as your width along the um, along the main axis, even when it's um, when it's actually your height. I hope that makes just a little bit of sense. So our first approach to define flex spaces is to say that it's the size along the main axis. Now I hope by now uh, you understand that we are speaking about the main axis of the containing element actually, because it's always the containing element that is kind of defining um, defining uh, how the uh, its items the, uh, can actually stretch and can actually behave because it actually defines how much space they have available. Um, now, one way to to put this in other words that makes it maybe a bit even a bit more useful is to say that it is the size on the main axis that the element actually wants. Now, what I mean by that is when we change the flex basis of this, this red box to 600 pixels, and when we now duplicate this element, what you can see is we have two elements with a basis of 600, but their real size isn't 600 anymore, right? It was, this is uh, 600. Th those are real 600 pixels. When we duplicate it, both of those elements are smaller than 600. So they still have 600 um, set as their basis, but they cannot reach this um, this basis or this size because there's just not enough space um, in the container. So uh, in that sense, um, it's useful to, to think about the basis as the ideal size kind of along the main axis. So the size that the elements want to, um, want to take. Now, Technically, how this works, and now we get into um, into this thing, how those three properties um, always play together. The reason that uh, they they kind of take up exactly the space that they have in the container is actually because the shrink property per default is set to one, and this allows them to say um, 
Okay, we have a basis of 600. Let's see how much space the container gives us and let's see, can we reach our ideal size? Um, if we are allowed to shrink, um, we cannot reach our idea and we cannot reach our ideal size we will just use that much space that we have and when we both have the same basis and both have the same shrink set uh, when shrink is set to one in both cases they shrink kind of in the same way and that's why um, that's why they have the same size here now, look what happens when I take this element and I remove the shrink or I set it to zero, which actually means you are not allowed to shrink. You have to be uh, what your basis tells you. Now you can see the element ignores the other element kind of and says, okay, I'm taking as much space as my basis is telling me. Now, the interesting thing is what happens when this element also is not allowed to shrink. Now, the elements leave their container. And you would consider this as a kind of broken layout most of the times because uh, the moment when they leave their container probably there was a reason why this container had as much space as it had and probably there might be some other element here and now this element would just ignore that and would overlap them and say okay you are not allowing me to shrink so i basically i have my basis i'm not allowed to shrink what what am i supposed to do i have to kind of adhere to my rule and um, take up as much space as my basis is telling me and that's why those elements by default have a shrink property of one um, which means that they will nicely uh, use the space that they have because they are allowed to shrink. Uh, 